Some of you might remember this particular quote at a 2005 commencement speech at Stanford University. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Now, some of you went the hungry route, others went the foolish route, and a few of you did both. Now, our next guest is certainly no fool, but he did have a bit of a silly project that he returned to after keeping dormant for a couple years, or an amount of time. Either way, the reason why it came across our desk is because it went viral, kind of a meme machine. We then asked him to come by and share how he built it, but also share lessons in scaling. Oh yeah, and he's a fine Canadian too. Oh yeah, and he actually made it to Oprah Mag. Now, here to talk about how we built Bill Clinton Got Swag is, as I said, a fine Canadian, Thomas Miller. Enjoy. Thanks everyone for, uh, you know, take some time out of your holiday to come listen to this, you know, kind of random story about a meme that was never supposed to be, but, you know, nevertheless is. Um, this kind of story spans a decade, um, or the better part of a decade, rather, and, and it wasn't always a story about Jamstack, but, um, well, Jamstack wasn't a thing, you know, a decade ago, but um, as you'll learn through kind of this quick story, you'll see kind of how it came to Jamstack and how I'm really grateful uh, that we moved this uh, project over to uh, Jamstack architecture for all the scalability reasons that, that, that we all know. So. Um, with that, I'll kind of go into the beginning. Um, so it, this starts back at university a uh, while back, about seven years ago. And I, like my father and my brother before me, was failing my statistics class. Um, couldn't figure it out. And so I said, okay, I need a side project. I'm not happy with school. I need to be doing something that makes me feel like I'm learning, but it is fun. Um, so I had been meaning, um, or so I, that night I kind of went back when I decided this and I was chatting with my, uh, with my roommates at the time and we were having dinner and my roommate had mentioned to me that his little brother, uh, had a Tumblr blog and this was kind of at, at peak Tumblr 2013 to 2015 kind of peak Tumblr time. And, uh, if you guys kind of recall back in the day, having a following on the internet, you know, it wasn't really in the era where people had tens of millions of followers or millions of followers is like, if you had, if you had 10,000 people following you, you were like a big person on the internet uh, at the time. And, and my, my buddy's little brother did, and he had this blog and we, we were kind of joking around making dinner, pulled it up. And um, there it was the Bill Clinton swag photo, the, the original one, or at least the first time I had seen it. And I saw it and I was like, perfect. This is funny. It's weird, whatever. I can totally make a script that allows you to, to kind of make this photo. Um, and so I kind of dived in and I said, okay, well, I've really been meaning to learn the Ruby on, Ruby on Rails. I had just gotten it off an, in, off an internship. Uh, I knew some stuff, you know, Heroku, MongoDB, Image Magic, which just is the C++ library that just like never seems to die. Um, <laughs> so I, um, I took this, uh, took three days off class, learned a whole bunch of new technologies, you know, scraped it together, bought the domain, launched it, and um, this was kind of the first version um, deployed on Heroku. And so I went and I, I posted it on Reddit. Um, not really anything happened. A few people landed on the site. I was sitting there with the Google real-time analytics open, adrenaline flowing, first thing that I put out into the world that you know wasn't for a company, just on, on my own. And uh, I was live coding some like, uh, um, UX improvements, you know, people were kind of dropping off. The bounce rate was pretty high. I didn't understand how to use the tool. I was like, oh, my design's bad. So kind of live coded some, some fixes. Uh, two hours later, you know, I got maybe two, three, 500 hits, something like that. Not really anything interesting. And I was like, okay, that was fun. That was a good waste of time. I learned a few things, time to get back to school. Um, so at this point in the story, you know, things kind of fast forward. About a year later, I, uh, I moved to New York. I was doing an internship there. And uh, my sisters came down to visit uh, a couple of weeks before I was supposed to move back. And we were out. My sisters asked me to say, hey, what, what, what happened to that thing that you built, that Bill Clinton swag thing? And I was like, well, geez, I, I, mean, I don't know. So we pulled up the Google Analytics. And it turns out a few months earlier, um, it had gone viral. It got a huge spike of traffic. And I was like, you know, a couple, a couple 10,000 users. Uh, 10, 15,000 users. And I was like, oh man. So I did went and kind of went back through the analytics and figured out where it was coming from. And it turns out 
um, some heavy metal form in Brazil um, stumbled into Bill Clinton's swag and it was sharing it all around this form. So it was just a bunch of uh, uh, metalheads in Brazil who were like really into Bill Clinton's swag. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. And just with like viral things, it's like peaks for like a day or two and then it drops off and you can kind of see that in, in the graph on the slide. Um, so it was kind of cool. I didn't really think about it. I was like, oh, that's that's fun. You know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to make a footnote of that in my next internship interview or whatever. Um, and then I kind of went quiet for Bill Clinton swag for a few years. Um, you know, there's some people that would tweet me over the years and saying like, hey, it's broken and okay, I'd log in. I think I rewrote it at one point to use Node.js and kind of like a worker queue or something like this. Um, didn't really change the design. It would break. Uh, I would have to log in, you know, restart the MongoDB instance or whatever, because you know, it was off Heroku, just using AWS at this point, but really nothing interesting. Um, it, I think it was actually down. If you search uh, on Google, Bill Clinton swag, um, one of the autocompletes is, why is Bill Clinton swag broken? Um, that was from the two hour <laughs> period where I just like kind of neglected it, but you know, would, whenever I found time, I could go, go back and fix it. Um, and then, uh, it's come 2019. Uh, this is what I look like now. I grew a beard. I was an adult. I got a job, moved to San Francisco, I was doing the whole Silicon Valley thing. Uh, and it was fine, you know, building, building stuff. And, and it was coming around actually this time last year, Christmas. And I was like, you know, I had so much fun with that thing. I don't, I, I you know, I, I've been all kind of super business for the last like couple of years, like let's, let's start having fun with code again. Um, so I decided like, okay, we're gonna rewrite this. And in my house at the time, still to this day, where we like nerd crush on Guillermo and the Vercel crew and Next.js, like we were reading everything that they put out. And I was like, okay, great time to learn a new technology. I don't need an idea. I already have an idea. Let's just try this Jamstack thing out. Let's deploy it, have lambdas generate the, uh, the images uh, uh, all the, all that great stuff. So, um, the other challenge this time, because side projects are really just about having fun, trying different things is that I challenged myself to write the whole thing on my iPad. I just got one. I thought it was the coolest device ever. And I figured I had this dream. This was before the M1 MacBooks that, that I could just use an iPad. And that would be the only device I could get rid of my phone. I could get rid of my laptop just code on an iPad because, you know, I'm a developer. I have an AWS account. If I need to code, I can just SSH into um, some server. And that's what I was doing. And you can even plug it into a monitor and terminal. It was great. Actually, I like, I don't advise it, but it is possible. Um, you, you, you can do it. So, uh, we coded it, or I coded it back up, put it, uh, with Next.js, um, had some, some kind of server side routes to go and, and generate the, um, generate the Bill Clinton swag images, store them in S3, this sort of thing. Um, and then I kind of just left it and I kind of went to bed. I was like, oh, that was fun. I completed my challenge. I built a website on an iPad or, you know, a website, you know, a single, single page little thing. Um, but I remembered this time to check the Google Analytics. I wasn't gonna make the same mistake. So every, every week or so, I just poke in and see if anything. I, I went back through some old tweets of people who said like, hey, Thomas, why is it broken? Replied two years later to two year old tweets. And I was like, hey, it's fixed. <laughs> I got, I, I saw those bugs. Um, so then it came to, to April. This was, this was around December, it comes to April and uh, look at the analytics and I see like, oh, okay. It's picking up steam again. People, people are interested. Yeah. Um, and this is time it was, you know, the story that people, you know, may know is that it first hit in Poland. Once again, I don't know, Poland, sure. Uh, I got like 50,000 users in Poland. Um, then like a day later, it was Mexico and Brazil. Uh, and then it was in the US and the UK. And that's when it really started blowing up. Some uh, woman in the UK turned it into, as far as I could trace it back, I think she uh, originated in the UK, turned it into an Instagram cha challenge where they said, hey, it's quarantine, we're all bored. Um, I'm gonna make something with my, my uh, album artwork uh, and then challenge your friends, you know, four of your friends to do the same. And that's when you get that kind of viral exponential growth, every friend challenging five other friends. And it started blowing up really quick. Um, and this is where I was really glad that I coded this thing uh, and deployed it on Vercel and, and kind of Jamstack. Um, but nevertheless, it's still everything broke um, because this was like a major amount of traffic. Um, at one point we were scaling up to, to 50,000 concurrent users on the site. 
at any given moment. So before the highest peak had been 50,000 in a day, this was 50,000 within a five minute period. Um, so the first thing that broke was uh, rate limits. So the site, for those who've been on it, you go, you search some album artwork, it drops it into the Bill Clinton swag image. Um, I was using the last FM API, I had a developer key, obviously like any reasonable API, uh, and there was rate limits. So uh, I just really wanted to ride this wave. So um, I solved it by signing up for 10 developer accounts and rotating out the a API keys on every request. Uh, do not advise doing this. This is a mean thing to do to a company, but I, it was just, I just needed to get my Twitter under control. Um, uh, but it, it, it did technically solve it for about an hour and then it kept on going further and there's more rate limits. And I was like, oh crap, what am I going to do? I can't just make like a hundred developer accounts. They're going to they're gonna shut me down completely. So uh, the second solution is uh, I um, buddy. <laughs> went and, and scraped HTML. I said, okay, if the, if the developer API key, if the JSON API fails, Last.fm has a web page where you can search and there's like a little URL bar where you can link your searches. So I said, well, they're not gonna rate limit their own site. So I said, as a fallback, if the developer API, API key doesn't work, I'm gonna download the actual HTML for a search result parse the HTML and extract out the information that I needed. Um, <laughs> and so um, that's what we did oh, and, and, it, and it did so work. Funny. And then the next aspect was, okay, I thought, okay, good, we're good here. No, this is when Vercel came uh, and they emailed me and they said, hey, congratulations, um, awesome project, but you're on the free plan and I don't know if this is fair use and can you please hop on a call with one of our engineers because um, you're hitting some AWS rate limits and we're not gonna increase your rate limit for this thing, you know, free account went up, but they're super nice. So they invited me to their company Slack. Um, I went and chatted with kind of Joe and Guillermo there and they, they kind of looked through the code, um, uh, looked through the code with me and they found a few opportunities for optimization. So this is when, uh, you know, they're evangelizing their, their kind of global CDN at that time. Uh, they said, hey, you can add caching to your API routes. Um, so Joe worked with me and said, hey, take the search terms that people search and lowercase them um, and just cache them because, you know, it's not like albums are released every, you know, minute or something like that. You can just cache them for a day. Uh, so we did that and it worked. They sent me this screenshot over and they showed kind of the heat map of errors. Um, the, it's like the 429 error. I think HTTP error is the rate limit. Um, and they just went away. You can see there's another section when I did a deploy and it kind of busted the cache for, uh, oops, busted the cache for a second. Um, and the, the interesting thing was, is that I didn't really think that this was going to be useful. I figured, you know, hey, it's people expressing themselves. There's, you know, tons of different search terms. Caching on search just didn't make sense to me. But it turns out um, everyone was just searching top 40 albums. So put a cache in front of it, that ended up solving the API developer key or uh, uh, rate limits from before. Also didn't mean that I didn't have to scrape. We just cached um, based what was on the, uh, uh, the Vercel CDN. Um, so this was great. I said, okay, finally, we're stable. My Twitter is not blowing up. The only thing that people were tweeting me at this point was, you know, congratulations and praise. And then also people wanted to upload their own photos. And I was not about to let people upload random images uh, onto a side project that, that just sounds like a recipe for disaster. Um, so everything was good for about a day. And then I woke up the next day to this tweet. And this is the lead developer over at Last.fm. And he tweeted me and he said like, hey, you are like blowing up our CDM bandwidth and we're kind of footing the bill of your project here because of all the images that are being served. Um, we had, uh, the project had, 5 x their, um, their normal traffic from their own, wow. their own users. Um, this is kind of how crazy this Instagram challenge got to. Um, so I had to go, um, you know, we were different time zones and whatnot. So while he was asleep, I was kind of reverse engineering their CDN and figured out a way to optimize and use like a, a more like a WebP format and a much smaller resolution because these, these things don't need to be high quality. It's, it's a meme. Um, and so he, he woke up the next day and sent me over. He's like, hey, you managed to cut it 80%. So, you know, problem solved, at least for now. Um, 
and and this is not even to talk about. I was also running a print on demand Shopify store where people could buy their 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 Bill Clinton swag stuff on their shirts. And the print on demand people kind of uh, uh, backed out last minute after I had taken a whole bunch of orders because of copyright infringement. So it was kind of a hell of a few. It was like two or three weeks of just like complete hell. Uh, but we finally got I got that all resolved and we were stable. Um, you know, it was a, a really crazy time. And, I, and I, the one regret is that I wish I enjoyed it more. Um, I spent so much time trying to squash bugs. But, you know, if it weren't for the Jamstack, for sell these sorts of things, there's no way we would have been able to grow to, I think it was like 60 million users in, that, uh, in two weeks, um, you know, from zero to 60 million in, in, in two weeks. Um, so I did manage to go back after and, and get some uh, memorabilia. You know, I got uh, interviewed in some magazine in the UK. Um, I was featured in uh, Oprah magazine. So that's definitely going on my LinkedIn. Wow. Uh, and then people actually started going and taking their own photos, uh, reenacting instead of using the, uh, the generator, they would just take their own photos. So I thought that was kind of fun. Um, anyways, it was, it was, you know, two weeks of my life, 15 minutes of fame, very fun, uh, glad it's over. Uh, there's three main takeaways though, uh, you know, because this is kind of jam stack and, and side projects and just kind of uh, uh, what I've learned going through coming out the other end is uh, for, first lesson is to, to just build. Um, as you saw with the kind of search results, it's like 99.9% .9 of people are, or like people are like 99.9% .9 the same. They're really not that different. Um, you know, we share like half of our DNA with a banana. Um, the point is, is that like, you know, if you're having fun building something, others will probably have fun consuming it. And if not, who cares? You're just having fun. It's just important to get started. It doesn't matter. Just like have fun, learn to learn new technologies and, and, and build. Um, and the second is never delete any of your work, put it on the internet, keep it up there. Because if I can be one, uh, uh, uh you know, a reference, like, you never know what's going to happen. I definitely didn't expect this when I failed my stats class in first year of university, um, but just keep it up on the internet and, and, and tend to it a little bit. Um, and then the third is like Jamstack, use a cache, learn how to use it. Um, they're great. There's incredible technologies out there basically for free um, if you're using the right developer tools that, that really allows you to build high performing websites that can scale up. Um, and you just you just have to um, learn the technology. So, um, anyways, that's kind of the brief uh, story of, of Bill Clinton swag. Um, I'm at Thomas Moore on Twitter. Um, if you have any questions, like hit me up on Twitter. But uh, otherwise, yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the story of how Bill Clinton swag came to be. Oh, my, is my mic on? Yeah. Oh, oh my God! So you might have heard me laugh, dude. That was amazing. Hold up, let me change the view here. Uh, side by side gallery. Uh, that was fantastic. And I don't know if you want to take a few questions now, or if people do have questions. Uh, did, are, are you up for a few questions at all? Yeah, absolutely. Anything. I mean, there's there's tons of gory technical details I didn't get into. So yeah, I'm I'm uh, open book. Anything uh, you want to know. I mean, does anyone have a question before I start? Because I, I was laughing on my own and I didn't realize my mic was on. So, you know, it might've come up a, a few times. Uh, anyone have questions before I, I get in? I have a question. Um, first of all, that's an awesome story. Thanks for sharing that, Thomas. Um, so you got your uh, Shopify store kind of uh, shut down last minute by your, your vendor. Were you able to monetize any of your traffic or anything like that at the end of the day? Uh, yeah, so I did, I, it was my supplier. So it's not like Shopify shut me down or anything like that. It was my supplier who was uh, afraid of copyright claims, um, which like I chatted with a lawyer. That was part of the two weeks of hell, like reaching out to lawyers and be like, oh crap, did I do something illegal here? Um, anyway, so I did, I did sell uh, a few shorts. I, I only had the store open for like two or three days uh, sold, but it was at peak traffic. So sold a whole whack of shirts. And then um, I ended up just finding a, a local supplier in California um, to do the printing, um, who was a smaller shop, wasn't as concerned about this stuff. I had to refund all the international orders, um, which was kind of a pain. I had to email out and you know kind of filter by the international orders because the California guy wasn't going to ship 
well, at the price that I was selling them, doing international shipping from California wouldn't have been profitable, uh, would have would have been very much in the hole. So I had to refund uh, a whole whole bunch of t-shirt orders, but oh, I did make a little bit of money on it. Um, I would love to get the store back up and running. I applied for some ad networks because I still get like uh, 20,000 uh, users a week. Um, but you know, Google AdWords doesn't like meme sites. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it was just a few t-shirt sales. Uh, was cool. how I was able to get it done. Well, I'm glad you got you got some sales out of it. There, yeah, ads seem like it'd be a good way to do it too. But yeah, yeah. If anyone knows a good ad network that's all about the memes, uh, please let me know because I've signed up for three of them and I've been rejected every time. Oh dang, that's <laughs> <laughs> too bad. And just give me a second here. My computer system just spazzed out. So external headphones. Okay. Okay, that's working. Okay, yeah, I'm back. And my thing just went. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. And uh, yeah, my my computer just went and just did something squirrely. And now my camera's not working, which is awesome. So I'm just going to keep it as is for now, which is totally cool. Um, so I'm going to have a couple other questions. I, I just didn't even know like where to start. Um, oh, actually, this was pretty interesting. So uh, when I saw that somber tweet from the person from Last FM, like, dude, we got to talk. And uh, I was like, oh, wow, this sounds super serious. So, but you also mentioned that um, part of the issue that I guess there was, um, it wasn't even a rate issue. I guess it was a bandwidth issue with uh, Last FM. And you said you moved to uh, like uh, converting the images to WebP and then everything dropped. Yeah, so I had the same reaction. I woke up, I saw this, I was like, oh crap, parties, cops are here, parties, <laughs> parties done, you know, like no totally. fun. Um, but it wasn't actually the search API. Yeah, it was the bandwidth, because uh, I was just taking the, um, they had, I, I think they were using Fastly or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't actually like downloading the images and converting them. Um, I just kind of did some poking around and figure out which CDN they were using. And uh, a lot of image CDNs have, uh, special URL parameters that you can put in and the CDN will optimize the image. So you're paying for less bandwidth. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just had to figure out which CDN they were using and uh, uh, get them to uh, optimize it on the CDN to only send over, you know, like a, a 128 by 128 uh, um, JPEG or WebP. I, I forget what the, the details was, but I, it was mainly reducing the resolution that was mm. the uh, major way to drop uh, bandwidth. Wow. That was super interesting to me because it was like, you know, it just seemed like there was a, there were a bunch of fires developing all around, you know, from like last FM to like Vercel calling you to, you know, it's kind of like who else is kind of coming, you know, knocking on my door now with their warrants, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it was like Florida and, you know, they're coming to get the, the girl's computer. Um, <laughs> that was actually awesome. You know, there's some details there. I obviously didn't know and I'm happy. Uh, that uh, you're able to share some of them here. Uh, and I, I do love the idea of uh, that you put out at the end, which is kind of like, you know what, just go do stuff. You know what I mean, try it out. You're going to learn new things potentially. Uh, actually, here's a question I had. If you had to redo it from scratch today, uh, you, you weren't starting it, say, like 10 years ago, you're starting out the gate. Like, would you change anything at all? Uh, yeah, so I did get hit with a surprise, really big AWS bill because the mm -hmm. original implementation was storing these things in S3 and they would have like links. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could go to billclintonswag.com slash swag slash like some, some uh, random string. And uh, I was saving them so you could recall and share it. But like most people just downloaded it and then re-uploaded it to like Instagram or whatever. So it was, I ended up paying for, uh, I got a $1,200 AWS bill uh, for a feature that um, was basically pointless. <laughs> uh, I mean, sure, you get more backlinks or whatever, but at that point, like, who, who, who cares? Um, so if I were to do it this time, and this is actually how the site works now, um, it just uses CSS 3D transforms to do, so like I break the image into like the background, then I put the four images, and then I put like uh, his hands on top of it. So I like broke it out into like three or four layers. And then I just use CSS to composite them. And I put a little note at the bottom that says like, screenshot it because this it, this this uh, ain't sticking around yeah. um, otherwise. And uh, that would have saved me a whole bunch of money. Um, I think there's actually a way I'm playing around with um, 
uh, you can use SVGs don't support perspective, three-dimensional perspective transforms. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, and so, but you can put a foreign object inside of an SVG that mm -hmm. allows you to put HTML in an SVG. And so I think that there's a way to use that to get back to the CSS three-dimensional perspective transforms. Mm -hmm. And then it's because of an SVG, I can do all of the rendering completely client side. I don't even need to have a backend. And I think that that would be like the best way to do it. Um, but uh, it's just something I'm poking around with. I, I think if I were to do it today, I mean, the S3 thing wasn't a concern because no one expects their thing to go viral, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm glad I sold some shirts to, to, to cover the cost. <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. And real quick, like, I, I, I'm not sure if, uh, if, if people have played around with the, uh, the actual uh, app itself, but did you want to quick uh, give people a quick demo on what it looked like? Yeah, sure. I got it here. So I remember the day I found it, I laughed my head off. You know, I was like, oh my God, this is so funny. And I was busy looking for like certain record covers. I'm like, which one would I use? Yeah, so you can just go here. This is the search bar. Um, you can go and search and kind of, oh, I think because I zoomed, there's some some nuance to get in, right. Oh, it doesn't work when it's zoomed in. That's a bug, there we go. But anyways, mm -hmm. you can go through, uh, you can zoom in, you can kind of click around on the different images to select which one you want to change. Um, you can generate, sorry, this now is just a, um, a, a timeout and then it just takes off the preview thing before it used to actually generate an image. But um, if you go under the hood here, uh, you can see that these are just uh, using transform 3D matrix. So there's a little bit of math that you have to do on the back end to get it yeah. right. Um, but uh, once you compute it once, it's 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 good for um, everyone. So, yeah, that's that's just kind of that's it. That's that's all the site is. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome.